Hello and welcome to Nice Big Wrench. Today is the start of a large project, well, a large-ish project. Uh, I've bought myself a Yamaha SRX 400. It's a Japanese import, uh, originally 1989 bike. Um, bought it for £700, um, but it's got 73,000 miles on the clock. Um, the history of it was an old guy owned it, used it as a daily driver, and then he, uh, he snuffed it, and then um, uh, somebody uh, took it over, cleaned it up, gave it a fresh MOT and then sold it to me. So yeah, grand total of £700 um, and it all worked fine for a couple of days and then it stopped fueling properly um, and basically wouldn't start and I think it's got dirty fuel tank or dirty fuel lines or something wrong with it. Anyway, I'm just going to do a, uh, a run around or a walk around just um, before I get started with stripping it down and fixing it up. As you can see, um, all of the significant engine bolts have all been replaced with stainless units which is quite nice so everything's tidied up and, and nothing should be stuck and, and seized um, I'm pretty sure those shocks are on upside down so I'll fix that uh, that should be nice and simple to do uh, the swing arm's been re-sprayed at some point and these are uh, just sprayed over the top of the rust um, it's got a predator exhaust can on it which is quite nice sounds quite fruity as you can see it's very black in there um, and I think it's over fueling basically running rich um, these bikes there's not much on the internet about them there's no Haynes manual for them there's no climber manual for them um, if you want to use a manual you have to buy one that's in Japanese um, and learn Japanese on how to how to set it up and how to use it basically um, Interesting, this is a, so yeah, this is a 1989 Japanese model that doesn't come with an oil cooler. Sometimes up under here, there's a, an oil cooler sits across here. That's about that high. Um, and it runs off of these two uh, bosses there. Um, and I think I might try and source one and fit one just to help the engine run a little bit cooler. But as you can see, for 73,000 miles, the exhaust pipes don't look too bad. The engine's quite clean. Um, kickstart only on this model the later models did have a uh, starter motor the last model of these but this one doesn't um, which I kind of like actually um, remote oil sump as well uh, the sump isn't built into the engine the, that's the oil tank um, obviously you can see under there the carburetor um, this cable is a really interesting one it goes to like a, a this a lifter valve I guess it's a lift, lift of valve. Basically, that pulls when you pull the um, put pressure on the kickstart. So I'm guessing it's a lift of valve that helps kicking it over and helps with the compression. Um, or this, so there's not so much compression that you can kick it over easily. Um, uh, as you can see with this one, somebody's tried to spray or wrap the um, the frame, the engine cradle, and uh, all the paint's coming off of that. Um, this is just weld. That's fine. Um, some of the frames showing a little bit of surface rust I'd like to clean that up as well at some point um, but I don't want to go down the route of doing a full strip down and rebuild on it because uh, it will take me forever and I've already got loads of projects like that um, the front brakes really wooden feeling um, so I think that needs a strip down and a service yeah look at that bleed nip look at that bleed nipples really rusty nice braided lines but yeah I think that needs a service, whereas the rear one, the bleed nipples look completely new. So I think that's just been freshly set, um, stripped down and rebuilt because the rear brake works perfectly fine. Um, as you can see, the bloke put it together used some wrong sized washers, just whatever he had lying around, I think. Um, interesting, the, the, the front and rear tyres are the same width, so it's not like the rear tyres extra wide. Um, the uh, What else is up with it? Yeah, the this side covers a bit tarnished where fuels come out of the carburetor um, and it's been a bit dirty and a bit, a bit tarnished there. Obviously there's a brand new fuel tap which I suspect he fitted, the last owner fitted to try and fix the fueling problem. Um, and that's the choke cable. Um, yeah, these are the two lines for the, um, or the three lines for the for the fuel tap. Um, no fuel pump in these, it's just gravity fed from the fuel tank. Looks like a new horn. Yes, um, he's fitted these uh, rubber boots 
rubber gaiters to the fork legs. I suspect it's because the fork legs are not in great condition underneath. Um, single disc up the front, uh, not a twin disc. I think the later models came with twin discs. Um, and yeah, lovely little, lovely little cockpit drop bars. He's taken the mirrors off, which I kind of like. It's really nice uh, to ride like that. I'm going to strip off the heated grips because obviously you can tell that's been there quite a while and it's a bit looking a bit crap and the grips are looking a bit sticky and crappy as well um, the forks are interesting they, they, you undo these and I think it's the preload that you um, that you adjust under these caps with a Schrader valve with a normal normal bike pump normal air pump um, but again because I don't have manual I've no idea what pressure that needs to be even started at is it 2 psi is it 20 psi uh who knows um but yeah that's uh that's how it's looking at the moment i've got a problem with the fuel cap in that <laughs> these three bolts are um rusty uh, the holes are rusty underneath so then in the actual metal of the tank so then you're re-tapping the only thing that's holding the fuel cap at the moment is the the one bolt that's underneath the inner bit um so i've got to do that as well uh the front brake reservoir, as you can see, he's used uh, whatever little hex um, Allen nuts that he had lying around. He's masticated or plastic welded the uh, the window, so can't tell what's in there. But obviously that was leaking at some point. Um, yeah, some of the wiring's a little bit sketchy on it as well. Um, but these things, uh, you know, you just live live with these things. If I can try and take the seat off one-handed I'll show you what's under the seat yeah so the seat comes off quite easily all the mechanics of the seat is all attached to the seat it's not just a simple catch but that's what you get under the under the seat there's no space under there whatsoever um, but the guy you see these are the indicator wires you see what he's done he's twisted and taped them and it's really really crap so uh, I've got to replace, I'll be replacing those with bullet connectors. Um, yeah, that's the rear brake reservoir. Oh, and as you can see, those are the instructions. That's how to route the um, breather pipe. That's the breather pipe for the fuel. And that's how to route it down through the bike. Uh, no idea what that means. Might be tire pressures. Could be telling me to ring my mum. She misses me, I don't know. Um, Oh look, just discovered this is all the wiring from the heat grips, the unwired, so we don't bother, bother worry about that. Oh, I mean there's a lot of wiring there. A little bit sketchy there. And then goodness knows what that fuse is for. But yeah, we'll see. Do a little bit of work to it and we'll see we'll see how it goes.